All right, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to meet together, to dream, yes. to envision what could be. Father, we know that your heart speaks so clearly in the scriptures that you want none to perish, but all to come to repentance, and that we as native people are ready to be your mission force and to engage in this um, great endeavor to see new people come to Christ, even people far away. So, Father, we ask not only for wisdom, but also for excitement, energy, and opportunities. Help us to put together experiences that allow Native people to share their story and to see new people come to Christ. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to share these new things that are happening. And we ask that you would give us uh, your blessing, that we would carry these things forward. Thanks again for this time to pause and to declare how we love you. And we're so thankful that you use just one person to reach the world for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, we're glad you joined us uh, this afternoon. And uh, it has been some exciting times to come together, uh, really as Native people, uh, with a heart and passion to reach our people with the Lord, uh, with a passion to disciple, to see I know when I talk to you, you tell me of, of uh, as far as families or individuals that the Lord can really reach and, and we can see the gospel shared and our people uh, come to know the Lord. So we're living, I think, in exciting times. And not only that, but uh, we're living in a time where I believe that the Native American uh, can really have an important part uh, not only in ministry on our res and in the cities, but also uh, in the world, globally. And uh, Darren, what I'd like you to do is to talk, you know, again, in pre uh, 2017, the first conference you spoke about, and uh, just the uh, vision, really, kind of that you gave us uh, from changing from that uh, receiving to going out. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's been uh, my pleasure to have come to faith as a, a Navajo. My father became a Christian, and then through his testimony, my grandfather came to Christ. And so the ministry of reaching people for Christ has been in our family. As I remember praying Acts 16.31 with my parents about our relatives. And it reads, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy household. And one by one, God was gracious to draw each family member to himself. It was hard, but by God's grace, we saw that grow. And I kept seeing and receiving you know, invitations of churches to come to the res. They want to help with Vacation Bible School. They want to help with this building project. They want to help with this um, project in some way. And I kept thinking, well, why are we the ones who are the receivers? We've been extended great grace. Where could we go? And in my training in seminary, I realized God has a plan. And His work is to reach the world for Christ. All who are called are also all commissioned. And so how could I do that? And so over my time and travels, I was able to go to different places around the world. And there was a great affinity. Uh, what that means is they related to me as a... Native American, a tribal person. And so I alluded to that in my workshop today about the Northern Hill Tribes in Thailand. There's five or six of them. And we have a connection because I'm a tribal person, they're a tribal person. And so they're more readily available to listen to what I had to say being translated into Thai and watching missionaries being translated into Navajo. I knew the pacing. Three or four sentences, three or four sentences. And so I had learned that in observation. And so then I started to apply that. Mm -hmm. And then God really challenged me in thinking about, okay, are we done being a mission field? And are we ready to be a mission force as Native people? Um, and I think it's our time. It's our time to engage it. And I think we can do it. Many of our um, Native people have gone to other places around the world, whether World War II mm -hmm. in the service, 
and then in, in service in the military and in other places, and we've chatted and talked about that, but uh, I think it's now time for us as Native people to go yes. commissioned by the Lord, and by a body of believers, to maybe even reach an unreached people group. Maybe that's overstretching, but I don't know. Maybe this is the conference that does so, that says we pick one, we pray for it, and we send a team. And so I think uh, for me, that's uh, why I'm excited to be alive now. The Lord may come back tonight, and that's okay. But uh, until then, I'm on mission. And as I challenge the people at the workshop, because you're not done, you may feel like you're finished. You're not finished. You're going to finish well. And as long as you're alive, God's not done with you. You're still on mission. So, yeah. That's good. What that, what that reminds me of is... Um, you know, the Lord can use us. The Lord can use our Native American uh, people to uh, be uh, lighthouses to the nations. We've never thought of it that way. For hundreds of years, we've been, like you're saying, on the receptive angle, uh, angle of it. But it kind of reminds me of a trip that I remember my dad and I making in 1990. In 1990, uh, or actually it was in 1991. But in 1990, if you remember right, communism fell, okay? The, the Berlin Wall uh, was broken. We actually got an invitation to go to Mongolia. And it was, a, it was an interesting experience. They, the, the missionaries that had researched that country, they had said, you know, we have, we have studied this country and this has been under communism for 70 years, uh, but it has opened up. But what we found out, and this was interesting, they said the people there, uh, we, we thought who would be most effective to share Christ uh, to the people in Mongolia? They said it's the Native Americans. He says because up north, they live in teepees. Up in the mountains, they live in teepees. Down in the desert area, they have desert area. Uh, they live in these round gurs, which are like hogans. And, and uh, they, they work with jewelry and turquoise. They work with beadwork. And they said, so we would, we would love to extend an invitation to go. So in 1991, we went. And what an experience. We had our feathers. We put up our feathers. We shared about Jesus Christ. They pointed at us and they said, dances with wolves. <laughs> <laughs> they seen the movie, okay? They thought we were all like that. And we had to tell them, no, you know what? There's over 500 nations, and we're all different, okay? And But yet we talked about ways that we worship God. It was amazing. I, I was speaking about the Navajos, and I said, you know, the Navajos, they had four mountains that they prayed to. And the interpreter stopped me right there, and he says, you know what? Among our people, we have four mountains that we pay, uh, pray to. When we talked about the circle of life, they said, we have a circle like that. And it was amazing, you know. And here, there was an open door to share the gospel like never before. We actually met with dignitaries, with the, with the pre president of that country. And before it was all over, and I still have that letter, it's an invitation by the president. He says, any time uh, that Native Americans come to Mongolia, you are welcome to our country. See? So that's just one example I think of. Uh, I wanted you, uh, Daniel, and uh, as far as Corrine, to share your experience that you've had. Now, you've been in Spain. And uh, tell us a little bit about that. I appreciate that. Well, my name is Daniel. This is my wife, Corrine. We've, uh, we've been to France and Spain, and we had the opportunity to uh, share. I'm going to let my wife share about this, the France part, because that's pretty close to her heart. But the, um, you know, I just think about what Billy Graham said and what was reiterated uh, last night about being a sleeping giant. I think part of, my, part of me is excited for that, but also part of me is I'm not satisfied with that statement. I just don't want to be known as a sleeping giant. You know, that's not good enough for me. I want to go. I want to, I want to, I want to be awakened. So uh, when we had the opportunity to go to Spain, actually Spain wasn't on our radar. Spain is our second ministry, but we had a, a native person 
uh, Cherokee actually from, from Oklahoma. He was supposed to go in the last minute, I think, you know, just nerves and things didn't follow through, but uh, we already, we've already been to Europe, so we've been there. And so we said, yeah, we'll go with, with like two weeks notice. We jumped in and part of that was like, God, wherever you send me, I'm gonna go. And uh, so there's three camps at this, this camp. Uh, it's during the summertime. Uh, they have an American sports camp, so like American football, uh, basketball, those, like a lot of young folks come out to that. But their biggest draw to this camp, the biggest attendees, is this, they call it uh, Indian camp, American Indian camp. And uh, so I'm Navajo. We live in Hogan, as Huron said, we don't, we don't live in teepees. I've never slept in a teepee. <laughs> so, but the campers sleep in teepees, so I had to go to Spain to sleep in a teepee for the first time. <laughs> but it was such a great experience because the camp, uh, Indian camp, is, uh, the theme is, is Indians. All the campers, you know, they're basically little Indians. And uh, so we serve as kind of the chiefs in a way. But I love how, <laughs> I love how, you know, I come from a small community in, in Arizona. We have a little trading post and uh, we have to take two hours to drive to, 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 uh, to like a Walmart. And uh, I've always been ashamed of my culture. I've always been ashamed to speak my language. I've always been ashamed of my skin color, but to discover that God has given us Native folks a platform to share the gospel uh, is something that really excites me. And we had a wide open doors to share with kids there in Spain about who Jesus is. Uh, a lot of it was educational too, meaning that we taught kids, we don't all live in teepees, you know? We don't all speak the same language and so forth. Uh, but to be able to talk with kids who would normally, what the average white American person would have a difficult time going into, uh, kids came up to us and just talked to us, asked questions. And uh, the highlight for me was one kid who came to that camp and said, my mom, my, my parents told me not to believe anything in this camp because they, they know it's a Christian camp. And she says, I'm an atheist, she said. I'm an atheist. So, long story short, halfway through the camp, she uh, gave her life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord. And uh, the, 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 the crazy thing is she has a fascination with, with Native Americans. And she kept coming to our teepee every morning, you know. And even in the evening, she was the last one. She's just like so enamored with who, who, who we are. And, um, but to be able to speak, like, to be able to have that opportunity where God has given us Native folks to, to go into countries where it's difficult. Um, and she, she, was, she was afraid to go home because uh, she knew she didn't have a church to go to. Uh, but I truly believe God is giving Native Americans a platform because most, most of the world that is unreached are the tribal, indigenous peoples of this world sure. and who better to to go out than us natives you know to be able to go to places where we can share the gospel that's good Corrine yes. um, hi my name is Corrine Esplin and I am actually from the Seneca tribe in New York State um, Daniel and I actually work at Indian Bible College in Flagstaff Arizona um, so these mission trips are kind of a second ministry for us um, but the Lord first put France on my heart in 2012 and I really didn't know what it was all about so I, I think if you feel called to missions just start praying I spent four years praying about it and had no idea where it was going until this guy walked up to Daniel and I we were serving with a, a tribe in California the Saboba Indian tribe and he came up to us and said that for four years he's been praying because the Lord put France on his heart um, and my jaw just dropped and he said but it wasn't for me he was a white guy um, 
he, it wasn't for him, the burden was for native people to go over to France and um, share the gospel. And he asked Daniel and I to pray about it and to see if we would be the first kind of the native, first native couple to go over there. Um, and I said, well, I don't need to pray about it. I've been praying about it for four years. Um, but it was just an incredible opportunity to be able to see how the Lord had paved that path before us. Um, and we had so many opportunities to connect with ministries that are already taking place in France and partner with them and just help in whatever way we could. Um, but we found that we had such an open door because every conversation we had led to the gospel. Because there's a fascination that Europeans have with American Indians and every conversation will revolve around uh, politics, education, and religion. And so they automatically assume as native people that we hate Christianity, as do many of the Europeans, especially the French. Um, so it opened up the door for us to be able to say, actually, we're, we're Christians. <laughs> And they were shocked by that, given what the history of Christianity and Native people have gone through, they assumed that we would hate um, Christianity. So one of the most powerful tools that I feel all Native people have as a Christian is their own story, because nobody can argue with that. Um, so I, I actually learned that from Ron Hutchcraft um, on e with On Eagle's Wings. And there was a lady who, who was um, an atheist, and she was just going off for like an hour. I was talking to her on the streets in Paris, and she was talking about how much she hates the church, how much she hates Christianity. And I was just praying the whole time, because I'm like, Lord, I do not know what to say to this lady. Um, and so I said to her, I hope you don't hate us, because we're Christians. <laughs> And she was shocked. She couldn't believe that as Native people we believed in Jesus. And so I just immediately, the Lord put on my heart Ron's words, just share your own story. So I did. I shared my story with her, and she was very quiet. And she, but she couldn't argue with it because it was my story. And I just shared what the power of what Christ has done in my life, the hope that he has brought to me, the healing that he's brought to me, and uh, we actually have heard from her several times since we've come back to the States. She's um, kept in touch with us. She hasn't given her life to Christ, but you know, I, I pray for her. And just the fact that she followed up to me is a big deal because we stood there talking about Jesus for quite some time. Um, so we were able to see how in Europe, how that fascination, because we actually went to Germany and shared about our faith there, um, that the conversation automatically leads to religion, because they're fascinated with what American Indians believe. So we are able to share the culture, but we're also able to share the gospel through that. Very good, very good. I think of, uh, for those that are considering coming, we, uh, again, at this conference, we have emphasized uh, the, the nations in scripture. You see in Genesis uh, where Abraham's call was uh, God said that he was going to be a father to the nations. You see in Acts 2 where the, the disciples are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and in the languages of the people they're pro proclaiming the gospel. You look in Revelation 7 and you see the adorations of the nations. God's creation all coming together worshiping and then the very last words of our Lord in, in Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20 is to go and to make disciples to the nations so that's where we wanted to really challenge everybody and, he, and even watching this today is is our vision so myopic or is our vision so focused that it's just us we're going to go see Jesus just me and myself and I, praise God, I'm going to go see Jesus. No, uh -uh. what, what uh, the Lord's plan is, is that we work together as the, the body of Christ going to reach the nations for the gospel. And so that's been the emphasis. Uh, like I said, we don't want to just preach it, we want to do it, okay? 
So we want to encourage you, and that's that's a part of the, the, the plan here, is that if we want to see God move within our nations, within our reservations, within our cities, we've got to be reaching out to the nations. And so the question I leave with you is, who is that nation? Okay? Is it local? Is it across the ocean? Whatever it is. I pray that God would speak to your hearts and the Lord would challenge you to reach out beyond your own community and share the hope that you have there. Now, what I want to do is I want to extend a personal invitation because in 2022, we're doing this conference in 2021. In 2022, we're, we are actually inviting you to go with us. Let's go as a team. Let's go as Native Americans, let's go as a representation of the church here in America and to different places. And as we do that, uh, I want to, there are several areas we're considering for 2022. Uh, we know that everybody can't go across the ocean. So Darren, we want you to join Darren next year as he reaches out to the immigrant community within Minneapolis area. That's one of those projects. Another project that we're considering is Ryan O'Leary and myself, we're going into uh, Peru, where, uh, and what a, what a story there, uh, because uh, God is, has moved in countries like Asia and South America, and uh, places where it, it's just, un, uh, it's incredible. When I went to Peru, uh, there are over 1,200 native churches that have come together. And the reason why the church is growing so much in Peru is because of persecution, because of death of, of uh, leaders and individuals back in the 80s. And it's just multiplied. I want the church in North America to experience what God's done in South America. Uh, uh, Corrine and Daniel my thoughts here, is uh, they're going to Spain and to France. And we want to give you that opportunity to go. But before we tell a little bit about that, I want you to kind of communicate to these folks. And, I, and I'm, I'm imagining you're watching and you think, well, this is the question. Why should I go? Okay, why should I even go? That's one question. And what could I contribute? What, what in the world would I contribute on a trip like that? How would you guys respond? What would you say, Ryan, to that? I would say to remember the message that was shared with you uh, last night. And what was that about? Be the conduit. Be the conduit, right? So we were talking about being the conduit. Two specific things in that message that I want to highlight. Number one is that God wanted to do what with Abraham. He wanted to bless him, right? And the second thing that God wanted to do with Abraham is he wanted to make him a blessing. He wanted to, he wanted Abraham to be that conduit. And so remember, that was a powerful analogy, um, um, what was shared last night about the difference between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee, right? The Sea of Galilee, the water flows through it. The Dead Sea, the water just flows into it. And so two real great reasons, I think, to consider going on one of these trips. God can use any of them. They're all wonderful opportunities. Number one is because I have found that when we reach out and we get outside of our comfort zone, um, that we are blessed. The book of Proverbs says he waters, waters, and waters him or herself, right? So when we give it to other people, uh, we get so much in return. And so remember that as we get out of our comfort zone and we reach out to other people, that we get blessed. We receive so much when we do that. Uh, I participated real quick in a couple short-term trips after we become a believer and a follower of Jesus. I went to Romania, Turkey, and, um, and Ukraine, and was just greatly blessed. So I affirm a lot of what these guys said here. And not only that, it's because God wants us to make us a blessing. How can we be a blessing if we don't go? It's simply because God tells us to go and tell the world and do it. We were living in obedience to him do that. Because the food's good. <laughs> Amen to that. Can I eat Ryan's saying the food's better in Peru, but they eat guinea pigs in Peru. <laughs> yeah. No, the food is good. Um, but I, I think, uh, I mean, just, man, just back to my statement. 
I mean, it's, it's good to be a sleeping giant, to be referred to that, but I don't want to be known as that. And honestly, guys, I think God's given us an opportunity as, as Native folks to step up and do that. And I would hate the, uh, I would hate if God were to say, you know what, I've given Native folks this time to step up, but they haven't, they're still asleep, you know? And I'm gonna turn to, I'm gonna use another, another people group. I, I would hate to miss that opportunity. And so I'm not waiting, you know, I'm going. Um, it's scary. But I think the sec my second point is I've seen my faith grow. I've seen God move in extraordinary ways. We thought we were lost a few times. I was, I'm a planner. She's not a planner. She's like, yay, we're lost. You know? <laughs> and uh, we didn't know where we were going to stay, but God showed up. And it's like you see God at every turn. Because here it's comfortable in America. It's so comfortable. You know, we, we know we can call somebody... Um, you know, we have churches right around the corner there. You're just dependent upon the Lord. If you want to see God move, if you want to really see the hand of God provide, man, consider going anywhere to work wherever God leads you. I don't know if I can really follow that up, but um, yeah, if the Lord is tugging at your heart um, and maybe you're not ready to go overseas or international, start some start small, like with uh, right. with Darren, and just stay here within the states and just see how God uses you, uses your voice and your story. Um, but I do have a funny story about yes. Peru. Um, I was in Peru in 2009 with On Eagles Wings. There were seven of us that traveled with that team, and um, very various tribes. But there was an Apache girl in there, and every time she introduced herself, they would yell Geronimo. So, like, everybody knew the Apaches. But the Peruvians all thought that we were dead. They thought the Americans killed all of the native people, so they were shocked. So we had this running joke that we were the last seven survivors. <laughs> That's a magnificent seven. <laughs> I think why is not just obedience, because God has commissioned us to go. When you're a follower of Christ, it, we are all in. And so we can obey. I think also, because I said before, we're tough. We know what it's like to be discriminated against. We know what it's like to feel ashamed. But uh, when you go and you share, and they are so excited for you, and, and even they think that you're back from the dead, <laughs> it's an amazing thing to... Um, Obey God and see Him work. I mean, you think, well, I don't, I don't know the language. God will make a way. Mm -hmm. You might think, oh, I'm, un, I'm afraid. But so were all the disciples. These were fishermen. We were told to go to the big cities, you know, and they went. You might think, well, I have no support. Well, there's four of us, five of us here who would say, yes, we'll be behind you. You might think, well, I have no money. Well, God. Opens all the money. That's right. <laughs> and we can find a way. And I appreciate what Kareen said as she prayed. It took four years, but she got to go. Mm -hmm. And so for you online, start, start praying. Mm -hmm. We'll give you our contact information and you'll be able to join us. And we're not just going to do it in one place, but hopefully several others because there is a great world in need of Christ. And so you just got to pray that you'd be willing be willing to go. But I, I am excited for the opportunity for Native people to serve cross-culturally. We do that all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'm right on time. But as a Navajo, you're never on time. <laughs> so I learned how to do both. Mm -hmm. You know, so we are cross-cultural even though you don't know it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay. Yeah, I think of examples. Uh, let's see, what was the thing in a bowl? Um, the most recent trip, I went to uh, Peru, and uh, I took a brother, he's a Seminole, uh, well, actually he's a Creek Seminole, or no, yeah, he was Creek Seminole, and uh, he was a pastor on the Seminole Reservation in Florida. We went to the jungles of uh, Peru, and what an experience uh, to uh, have a time of worship. I mean, when they came to worship, the, the, it almost felt like the roof uh, was going to fall, okay? Because they were just praising God. They were singing and they were rejoicing. 
And my, my dear friend, he's a flute player, okay? So he brought out his native flute and he started playing. And you should have seen the, the looks on the faces of those native individuals. It was incredible. What was beautiful was before the week was over, before our time there with them, you know what they did? They worked on a hymn together, okay? And they used their instruments, and they used his instrument of praise, and uh, it was incredible. I, I recorded that. I've got that. And so what can you do? There's a lot of things you can do, okay? If you can...